Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave with friend of Tested Hacksmith, James. It's good to see you in the you cave too. and I'm amazed that this is your first visit. I'm, yeah, it should have been years ago. <laughs> I'm such a fan of the stuff you do uh, and you have brought something to, sh you brought a show and tell. I did and this is actually the, the very first public viewing of this. Oh, excellent! A man of your pedigree deserves to be the, the first one to, Bless. to react. Bless you. Um, so I'm, I'm sure you're aware of our proto lightsaber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, propane oxygen flame, laminar flow, looks like a lightsaber. We did it, the world's first retractable plasma-based lightsaber. So we've actually spent the past year now, we built a class 100 clean room at our facility. What? In order to be able to manufacture our own liquid oxygen components because quite literally that is rocket science. And if you do it wrong, that... Uh, Your ambition is remarkable, <laughs> that's spectacular. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, we've been revising the system. Um, it's, it's super easy to put the propane in the hilt. Sure. But to be able to get the flow rate of oxygen required to right. sustain this, this flame, the only way is liquid oxygen. Oh my There's, God, so there, you have a... Box tank built into this thing now. Yeah, I will tell you we and a liquid nitrogen purge system and like all. We we investigated. <laughs> there's a famous liquid oxygen myth that we investigated on the show and wrote three times. And every time we wrote it out, we felt eh, it's too dangerous for us to test. Liquid oxygen is the scariest stuff on earth to me. Yep the uh, the cleaning process. I think it's a 15 step process. We we even have a. Um, because any I, any debris you end up in there, there's will a get chance for ignition. Heavily oxidized. Yeah, <laughs> and even beyond, like the the fact, like uh, it will automatically pressurize the system to pressures that right. nothing can withstand. So um, yeah, mistakes are catastrophic. Yeah. So Bogdan's been working on this for the past year, <laughs> oh full God. time. He was actually going to be here to explain it to you. Unfortunately, he was actually in a car accident literally yesterday. He's fine. He's fine. Okay. But it was like a, if he wasn't in a Tesla, he might. Might have died, like oh, literally wow. a, a front end collision. They had to be like pulled out, like. But he's okay. He, yeah. Okay. So I will do my best <laughs> explaining fair, the system, fair, fair. Um, understanding that I, I didn't design this. I've got a pretty good understanding of it. Maybe if he's really <laughs> pissed off, well, you can release a reaction video. Yeah. From yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, couldn't bring the real one. We, obviously, we only have one right now. We're sure. still doing tests. We did a, our first successful liquid oxygen test last week, actually. Wow. Um, so you're ran right into, in the thick of this. Yeah, ran into some issues. Um, I, I think one of the biggest problems with this design is <laughs> it'll never, ever, ever, ever be commercially viable. And it really is more of this science experiment because <laughs> the design both needs to be preheated on one side and pre-cooled at a cryogenic level on the other side. But once it's running, it's self-sustaining. And I'll go over how that works right now. So. It's a 3D printed version. We've painted the parts, so it, it looks pretty good. Logan was actually the one who uh, painted it together. Oh. So this is half of it with the cross-sectional area, and this is basically what the full thing would look like. So we can go over the, the different pieces. Um, this is the propane tank. Uh -huh. So you can literally just fill that with a normal propane yep, or butane yep, yep. thing. You've got some of the pressure relief valves down here. Inside and each here. of these, you're not only building the mechanical component, you're aestheticizing them to fit within a yeah, narrative it's a, it's a very, framework as uh, well. The other thing that Bogdan's really proud of himself on is he didn't want any electronics. Oh. So that system's not quite done yet, but you can see there's a rack and pinion there. Yeah. That's actually a linear slide bearing. The ignition system is all manual. It's um, all mechanical. All mechanical valves. Wow. Um, he put a lot of time into... So when we, when we built the first proto lightsaber, we had to tune the, the oxygen and the propane flows just right to be able to maximize and get the nicest three foot flame yeah. we could. So he went back and he, he basically tested different orifice, like he did the calculations, but then he'd test all the different orifice sizes. Yeah. And then he was able to basically shrink down what was a pretty big assembly to almost no space at all. A series of laser cut and CNC machine brass discs that he braised together because the, the <laughs> nozzle, which I can actually show you right here. The shower head. <laughs> oh, look at that. So the nozzle alone is about $3,000. <laughs> like it's, it's a glass blowing <laughs> torch. But on the under, other side, you literally have, I think, it's either three or six inlets for both the oxygen and the propane. And then... Um, In order to get the balanced and quite laminar flow yeah. you require. So now, 
literally it used to be this big assembly. It is that. It's that. That oh assembly. My God. So literally just propane and oxygen into one port, and then it all gets split up and and, and goes from there. But back to um, how the system works. So that's your liquid oxygen tank. Oh my God. <laughs> that's your liquid o- <laughs> The scariest lighter ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> this will be a aerogel uh, insulator. <laughs> nice. Fair. Right, um, right, right. So right. that sits in there. And then it goes up to this first unit right here. And um, that's a purge valve. Right. So that'll actually open one of these. The other one's a pressure relief valve. So if the pressure starts building, it will. It can't fail catastrophically. Is the exactly. Idea. Yeah. 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 Um, so the ironic part is like you, you fill this thing, <laughs> and then you've, you've got minutes before you can use it. It will last for about 90 seconds, which is actually pretty good, all things, all things <laughs> all considered. All things considered, yeah. Um, but even to get to that, so these are copper heat pipes. Yeah. And that is, that's exactly what it looks Your like. Your heat exchanger. Yeah, so okay. the, pro, because the problem is <laughs> expanding gases get cold. Yeah, yeah. So the propane wants to freeze up anyways. Yeah, yeah. It's also right next to cryogenic <laughs> liquid oxygen, <laughs> yes, yeah. which will also cool it down, so you need to have a thermal barrier in Most between. Most people would have stopped this project just <laughs> on the basis of these complications. Yeah, so what, what happens is <laughs> Amazing. the propane gets piped through the copper here, and these heat pipes are actually slightly within the flame. So, so it, it's actually a self-sustaining reaction once it's going. This is like you borrowed this idea from NASA about <laughs> getting your temperature. It, it quite literally has yeah. rocket science. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Wow. So yeah, it, it's preheating the gas, which then comes back and gets mixed in with the oxygen coming through there. And then you get your, your, your flame off the end, and you can see with the cross-section. It's, it's really crazy. Even just looking at it on a thermal camera when the system starts up. It's oh, wow, just like right. all the like warm, cold, warm, cold, <laughs> spreading out. Um, technically, this is the first prototype of of his system and it almost worked, which wow. I think is pretty incredible considering the complexity of the design. So the thing that he ran into, yeah. which he wasn't quite anticipating, but you could probably assume it would happen, was as soon as the liquid oxygen got in because it wasn't pre-chilled, it already turned into gas. Of course, started. of course. So literally even getting it to fill with liquid oxygen instead of just like yep. draining so much oxygen through the system until it eventually right. cools it all down. Um, wow. And then until the flame is going, you don't have any heat heating up the propane. Right. So um, he You're had this- build a preheater? Yeah. Oh, so okay. his plan was to build this basically like filling station that does yeah. all these things in, <laughs> in sequence wow. to actually allow him to ignite it. So maybe the, maybe like part of the Jedi costume will be like a pre-warmer on the upper <laughs> thigh for the end of their lightsaber. <laughs> yeah. So for for functionality, we're also planning to have a um, a very thin magnetic quick connect gaseous oxygen hose. So if we wanted to actually demo this for someone in a reasonable in a way, reasonably timely, fashion. we can actually just carry a small oxygen tank in your pocket and then go from there. Who do you call to get custom shapes made out of aerogel? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, he bought a bunch of samples from Master Car. Sure. Um, I'm not too sure how the progress on that is going this, this right is now. Incredible. Um, this is 3D printed aluminum. Yeah. Um, it okay. needs to be changed a little bit, but it's- And 3D printed aluminum, right, they're using that in rockets, in, in aerospace, yep. so you do have understanding and numbers about its engineering capabilities Yes, for pressure and yeah. those kinds so of the, things. So the nice thing is the fuel system out of all things is the easiest, like it's 100 PSI. It's, right, it's right, not right. bad at all. What are the pressures of LOX when you put it in a... <laughs> <laughs> um, so under my understanding, <laughs> like if you put LOX in a sealed container, it will develop up to 15,000 PSI. <laughs> So that's why we don't have tanks, sealed tanks of liquid oxygen. Yeah. We, you just, your best bet is keeping it liquid and cryo and letting it just leak. Right. Continue, continue to leak. Yes. So for example, we, when, we, when we finished building, this is the most ironic part, we finished building this very expensive clean room. Yeah. Um, it cost a couple hundred thousand dollars to build this room. If we hired a company to build us a clean room, yeah. you're probably talking millions. Yeah, of course. And you, did, you followed a procedure of building it dirty and then cleaning it. Yes. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we, we finished it to be able to film the video showing it off. 
And then Bogdan wasn't actually ready to use it for another three months. So the fans and filters have just been running constantly for the past Oh, three. of course they have, which because, is costing you a fortune. <laughs> yes, because it would cost us even more to re-clean the room. So it's just like we have this amazing space. <laughs> oh. And it's a double layer clean room too. It's a class 1000 clean room and then within it is another Class 100 clean room, both of which is that where you like need full forced air to be in it. Both are oh, forced okay. air. Okay, all right, yeah. fair, fair. So even the Class 1000 is already cleaner than an operating theater that you'd have open heart surgery in. You need to wear a full um, bunny suit, hair net, masks, everything, beard the, net. Yeah, um, <laughs> we have some very scary acids. That I didn't realize that as long as you have a business license, like people will sell you these things where you're like, huh? Yeah, the probably first, shouldn't have this. The first <laughs> time, the first time I ordered a great all, and the guy dropped it off and tossed me the keys and didn't ask <laughs> any questions of us. I was like, this, this seems like a weird hack. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like even just that room, um, lots of ultrasonic baths, the process of cleaning each part, servicing so, it. So the end goal is to build how many of these? Um, not too many. Not too many. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm, it's, it's becoming more and more evident that it's going to be very hard to demonstrate that anywhere other than at Herc. Right, right, um, right. Which is unfortunate because it, yeah. Um, Adding the, the the gaseous oxygen option should make it a bit more easy to right. like. I could even bring it here because I just need to pick right. up a tank of regular oxygen. Like it's not not that hard to do. Yeah. But if I had to order some li locks to your shop <laughs> and bring the whole like setup, it would be uh, it would be a bit uh, a bit of work. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, your ambition is astounding and really delightful. Yeah, so my, my, biggest, my biggest fear with this project is obviously our very first Proto Lightsaber video took the internet by storm. Yeah, yeah. It has over 50 million views now. We've done lots of iterations since then, showing off basically the same thing, compacting it a little bit. Yeah. Um, the challenge of actually showing this off and people realizing that it's this impressive and it's, it's, it is it's something new, even though it kind of looks the same, yeah, yeah. is actually like a serious concern and challenge of like, how are we going to like... What is the unique? This, yeah, and uh, I think the the biggest unique factor that I'm we'd like to try and orchestrate is actually being able to show it to some of the Star Wars actors, oh. getting their hands-on reaction. But again, probably can't do it with locks because <laughs> a very dangerous, b all those other things. <laughs> Here you go, Mark Hamill. Don't drop it or you'll die. <laughs> not, not seriously, but yeah. Essentially, yeah. Wow. This is, the, I had no idea how deep we were about to go when you pulled the cover off this. This is magnificent. And I mean, you are learning. I mean, the, the, the institutional knowledge you're building. I'm not sure if it's going to apply to other things in the future for you, but yeah. holy cow. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna have to start figuring out some other projects we can do with <laughs> both that room, with the clean room and the knowledge that we have. Amazing, like, James. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is spectacular. This is like I. One of the things I love about YouTube is it's often an excursion of like, if you gave a ten-year-old a million dollars, what would they do? Right. That's yep. a very specific sort of category, and this is right in the sweet spot of that. <laughs> yeah, and especially with like the. No commercial liability. It's like, who else is going to do this? Right, right, <laughs> right. No, you it's, it's I really, really appreciate that you guys are, are have tackled this and are executing it. And I cannot wait to see it IRL. Holy cow. Yeah, we're, we're hoping within the next few months we'll get to the point of it actually functioning and working. Um, making the video then, I, I'm not too sure, so I don't want to promise <laughs> that's, anything on that's when later. the internet at large is going to get to actually see this. Um, because yeah, it's uh, it's been quite something. James, it's <laughs> so inspiring. What an, an amazing effort. Thank you guys for joining us. Oh my God. And we'll include links to all the relevant uh, stuff in the description. James, come back when you've got a working, well, <laughs> we'll figure something out. <laughs> yeah, and come visit Herc sometime. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Um, the, the power loader's got your name on it. You can drive it whenever you want, so. <sighs> all right, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next time.